So for everybody else who's not seeing me, my name is Mark McGrain. I'm the council commissioner. I'd like to thank everybody for coming, for talking about the hub update class. Again, for those of you online, um, depending on how this recording comes out, it'll be saved and posted later on. Um, <laughs> and I will check chat rooms during breaks. Um, but please just speak up with a question because nobody's muted on here. Also presenting with me tonight is uh, Brad Boder, our scout executive. Um, him and I went down to Florida Sea Base to get the latest information from National on all this. Everything's been stuff that's been on uh, Cup Gas Live, the national sites, things along that line. So nothing's changed since we went down for this. Now, um, last time I did this, I opened up the presentation, kind of people walking in the room, there was a uh, marketing survey they had gone around and where they developed this information. It's kind of neat with looking at where, you know, how they derived this. Like, you know, one of the things you'll see is that the um, a lot of the awards went away, they became achievements. Why? Because nationally, on the different awards we have, like the, the shooting, the BB gun, the camping, the pack camping, only about 3% of scouts were actually earning. It was amazing, right? It wasn't driving the program. And we'll talk about it in there, but we have a whole slide deck set up for that. So what I'll do for everybody here and at the end, since we had so much difficulties getting the, the equipment working here at, at the location, I will set it up at the end. So. If anyone wants to watch it at the end, if you guys want to stay and watch it, I won't leave until you've seen all the slides. Same thing for you guys online. Just log off when you're tired of watching the slides or don't watch them at all. So. Let's try to get going. Okay. So the new cup program, they really broke down into four basic principles. They wanted to make it fun, right? Because some of the activities just weren't fun. Make it simple. So. People can understand it and put it forward and not have to have a lot of prep work or know a lot about scouting or have a big history in scouting. Make it easy so anybody can pick it up and go with it and roll out of June 1st, 2024. And that's the big thing you remember is June 1st, 2024. And we'll kind of hit that date again and again and again as we talk about the different stages of program release. Because I know, especially for us, you guys all in packs, it's like, well, what about the we blows and guys going into AOLs and what do they do? So, yep. Yeah, so there's an overview of um, some of the big basic changes. So the requirements are coming out. The main thing to remember on this is it's six required, two electives. And they have more than that in there. But, you know, before it was uh, so many here and so many here. Yeah. What's that? You can, but I'll send out the presentation later on, and it's it's been out. But you're you're welcome to go ahead and take a picture. Uh, but the big thing is, different programs had different requirements with how many adventures, electives, arrows, things like that. Well, now it's simple to remember: six and two, six required, two electives, and of course you can do more. You'll see on every single one of those, they all start off with bobcat. Bobcat's been changed into an adventure now. It's not a patch that you earn anymore starting June 1st. So, what's that? Let our scout ours then. Well, they'll still be getting the stuff. I mean, you'll see how this change goes on, and they'll still be working on it as they progress through their ranks. So, even though they've earned Bobcat now, each time they'll be working on this adventure um, to move it along in there. So, six and two. The easiest thing to remember in the world here, six and two. So, four main areas of improvement happen in this. One is Bobcat. And we'll dive into each of these a little bit more, but, you know, Bobcat, it's it's one set of requirements is, is ineffective, right? We took the same requirements that our brand new Lion Scout had to earn or do is the same requirements that our AOL had to do or our Weeblos or Weeblos 2, whatever you called it, right? Those are vastly different age and education and ability levels, but it was the same requirements. Uh, and you know, what did it have to do with keeping the kids involved, right? They learned it, but there was nothing building, nothing kept going in. And you know, one of those things is, is when a kid joined your, your den or your pack later on, if, bless you, if everybody else had earned it, what happens? He or she has to earn that, right? So they were getting a feeling of being left out or that other kids knew things. So now every year, they're all gonna work on a little bit of Bobcat, learning the same, learning the things as they went. And there was always the question, was Bobcat a rank or was it in a rank? Because everybody had to do it, but it had a cloth patch. And right. yep, what was the thing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
So our adventures, big changes in there because they're very disjointed when you look at how they were. There wasn't a lot of correlation between one rank to the next. Sometimes there'd be a water activity, but nothing related to water in another rank. You know, it wasn't like common themes all the way across and things. So that's been fixed. And uh, they want, volunteers wanted more of the elective types of adventures. So there's quite a few in here now. Weeblows was another big change, right? It was, Weeblows currently is a fourth and fifth grade program, right? People will call it Weeblows 1, Weeblows 2. Some will call it Weeblows then and AOL then. Whatever it may be. Well, now they're two distinct programs. I mean, look at it. Right. For those of you involved with the Weeblows AOL program right now, it's the same electives, right? You're just okay. We'll throw some here and throw some here, and and they weren't always necessarily appropriate, and, and you know sometimes they didn't give a, a scout something to do, so they created a definite. This is Weeblows. This is AOL, and they both have their focus. And then the awards, like we talked about, is you know awards. And I'm sorry we didn't get the the slides going, but we'll do it at the end. It was really enlightening to see how much of this was driven by by the marketing and advancement and surveys, right? So a lot of times I'm sure I've seen Voice and Scout at some point where you've gotten an email as a parent or as a unit leader saying, hey, we'd like to answer some survey questions. And they took that information and they worked on developing this new program. And we'll see how what some of those survey results were. But um, it wasn't driving the program at all. We have an incredible outdoor Two outdoor awards, right? The baby and then the shooting award. But units weren't out camping. Well, right. the ones that earned it, it was always part of the program. They weren't doing it for the award. They were doing it because camping was part of the program. The units that didn't go camping, well, they knew about the award. They just not part of their program. So what was the purpose of having an award then? It wasn't driving any kind of program. So in turn, they made heavy changes and turned these into elective adventures so kids can get something for it. And you know, there was even one set in here that the requirement was not just that the scout did it, but a percentage of the den or the pack had to participate. And that scout may have done it, but if the unit didn't, he or she didn't get the award. Well, how fair is that? Yeah. Right. So that's been changed in there. And we're going to look at details of all this. So we've also had common activities for the required adventures in here. So it's built to grow. One of the most interesting, well, there, I, I'm going to say this a few times because there was a lot of really interesting things, and I think Brad will agree, but you know, I was a den leader um, for both of my kids when they, they came up through scouting. And, uh, you know, we met every week. You know, every week was a den meeting and once a month was a pack meeting. Um, and at the same time, you know, we had enough kids that it was a lion's den, a tiger's den, a wolf den. But then come to find out, uh, based on the, the, the data available, because this is, all, again, all data driven, is that a majority of the units in the U.S., they don't meet once a week. Right, right, right. I know. Um, Where is that? Can we go? Right. You know, they actually, um, because of whatever going on, they were meeting generally once, maybe twice a week, uh, I mean, a month with a pack meeting. So can you imagine like one one den meeting a month and then one pack meeting a month? I bet they were like so behind. Well, and that could create problems, right? And then the other part of that was, um, a lot of them, because of, of numbers, they didn't have enough to sustain a lion's and a tiger's. So we're not going to tell a kid no, but when you try to put them in the same or, or work together as like a joint den, um, it made it very hard because the requirements weren't anywhere near the same. No. Right. They fixed that. So there's an example um, of how that works. So this is one of the outdoor adventures on here. And on this one, it shows, you know, for lion, it's the mountain lion award. Requirement two, take a walk outside, spending at least 20 minutes exploring the outdoors with your Cub Scout Six Essentials. Then for tigers, it's tigers in the wild. Take a walk outside, uh, at least 20 minutes exploring the outdoors with your, okay, this sounds like I can do both of that together if I needed to. Requirement five, take a walk outside for at least 30 minutes. Explore nature in your surroundings. Describe four different animals. So we're starting to see differences now, right? But can I put those stems together? Sure, right? Yeah, There's a lot of commonality in here. Well, no go ahead. So they made it so like you could basically, instead of doing it with just your den, you could like do it as a whole pack now? You could or for some of these things, but really the intent is because there's a reason for a den meeting is to keep separating. Okay. Each den should work on their own thing. But what's important there is that you don't, if you don't have enough kids to support a den, we don't want to tell them no. Yeah. 
But then again, we don't want them to get so bored because while my one lion was a part of the tigers, next year when he or she becomes a tiger, they did it all. Yeah, should they do it again? Right. You know, no, we want to have enough differences so there's something new when they move forward. But on the same turn, we can. Uh, oh, there's not enough movement. Right, you might as well hit those other light switches there because since we've got <laughs> nothing. <laughs> yeah, so there's two switches right by that door. So if you get those switches, they should take down the lights and, you know. Oh, oh, oh. You guys can still see the screen, all right? Watch right? the projector work. Yeah, right? Not watch the projector, not work. Uh, Marcos, remind yourself, don't post that section. Uh, yeah, right. Okay, so you can see how this goes. It keeps progressing, right? Every skill builds on the last one. So that worked out to be a great thing. And they did this all the way across. Yep. They've also simplified the requirements a little bit. Some people will say, you know, they, they water down to, well, no, every elective is, or every adventure now, because that's the other change. It's not elected, they're adventures. Um, is generally five requirements, okay? Now, the way they designed this is most of these adventures can be completed in one or two dentures. And again, that goes back to what did they find? A majority of scouts in the U.S. are only meeting once or twice a week a month. So they wanted to make sure that kids can earn these awards, right? That's what we want them to do. We want them to earn it. So, and again, you can just see how they wrote some of this on here. And again, that's just um, the uh, code of wool. Now I'm here to tell you anything that you think is, you know, this adventure, every single adventure got changed. Every adventure. They went through and rewrote every single one. So we'll see later on where some of them stayed the same as far as a name goes, but that's truly it. Just a name. There, there was nothing left of the original. So again, here we are back to seeing at the screen there where I had the six and two. It's showing how they all have themes. And if you take a look, right, we have a, a mission statement in, this, in scouting, right? There's a purpose that we're here, a, a mission we're trying to accomplish with these scouts. And I know it'll be a little harder for you guys in the back to see, um, but if you take a look, like Bobcat, all the way across is focused on character and leadership. That's its focus. If we look at mountain lion, tigers in the wild, and just keep going across, that's focused on outdoors. We look at the fun on the run, and then across from there, personal fitness. Um, King of the jungle and across is citizenship. Then we look at lion's roar and across is personal safety. And I really like what they did with that. For those of you who know me, I do a lot with the health and safety components around here, and I really like what they did here. Um, Lion's Pride is on family and reverence. So is this the new, like what the new books this year yep. kind of like? Oh, I'm going to show you pictures of those. I got pictures of them. Well, when do we get them? They're here. You, you have oh, to go God, down to the scout go. shop and get that. Oh. You know, I wish, Mark, don't put this part in. I wish somebody would have sent out an, uh, a council-wide email notifying every committee chair, by a uh, cub master and den leader that the books were now in stock. They did. Please come. Yeah. They did. I don't care. I said it. <laughs> <laughs> That's I mess, I mess messing with her. My, you know, you know no. I don't like this thing called email. Give me a call. You want messing to call? with her. <laughs> There's like 800 volunteers here. I, think I can't call everybody. No, it's a day. There's only four of us in the room. I mean, I think we should be just trying to figure out. I so think you are. I am. <laughs> My son goes from Bear to Weeblo this year. Yep. He's excited. That I'm excited about this whole new program. I really it, so that it looks awesome. again. Oh, I'm not coming back to I'm not going back. He's a tub master. He gets to do it though. Yeah. We're gonna play with them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so Bobcat, you'll see it's it's right across the top. This is intended to be the first adventure. Now, can all of them like work towards that in their own den? Yes, or everything is in their own dens. So it's intended because there's different requirements for each one. In fact, we'll look at some of the Bobcats when we get but more my specific. Question would be like if they earned it last year, is it like different this coming year? Okay. They would be, okay. yeah, they'd be earning that it, it'd be adventure this year. Oh, awesome. yeah, or I should say after June 1st. That'd be so, um, the intent is is that everybody works on Bobcat at the very beginning, it's the first one. Now, I say that's the intent. This is a big thing with the Cub Scout program, and some people misconstrue it. What's our standard? Someone say to yourself. Do your, do your best right that's our standard for things right and we strongly recommend okay. right we strongly recommend that this is your very first one each year if it's not does, does it mean it has to has to has to be no maybe a great opportunity came up and you had something else that fit in there and you did it 
but really the intent is that. And you're going to find that with some of these electives uh, or some of the requirements on things is they gave you actual options on stuff, which is cool. And I, I, I mean, I'll tout those more when I get to them, but I think they're absolutely awesome. The fact that they're giving us options. And again, that says a 20 minute hike, right? We looked at that one. Does it have, what if a kid can't do 20 minutes? They tried their best, whatever reason, it ended up being 15. Are you going to tell them no? Or her? No, because they did their best, right? You know, maintain absolute rigid flexibility. You know, Cub Scouts is do your best. Okay, so let's look at some of this feedback. So this happened to be Spirit of the Water Adventure. What they did for, and I don't know, Brad, if you've got one of these. I, I did, because I was a den leader at the time. I got a survey that said, here is one elective that we're, what we're looking at. And they gave me the requirements. And they said, okay, what do you think about this? And they list all kinds of questions. How long would it take? Do you think this is appropriate to the skill set? Blah, 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 blah. And they got these from leaders and they keep sending them out. And nationally, not as the BSA, when they do surveys, they consider um, it's about a 30% return rate being good. BSA wound up with about a 70% return rate. So that was exceptional, mm -hmm. right? These surveys went out to our leaders. They went out to our parents. Um, a wide variety of group and at different levels. Now, at the same time, they start looking at anywhere from the, uh, what is it, 60, you know, 65, right, percent on up for, you know, when, when somebody says, remember you know, on those surveys, agree, disagree, strongly disagree, I agree, neutral, whatever. So when they look at all those nationally, not BSA, national marketing about um, 60, 65 percent and higher is considered good. BSA wasn't happy until they had over 80% positive results on the stuff that they're saying out. If it didn't come back as an overall total of about 85-ish percent compliant of people that liked it, they kicked it back and redid it until they got it. So, and you can see right here, on uh, just spirit of the water, the requirements are age appropriate. Well, look at that. We're, we're looking at 28% here agree and then 62% totally agree. That's great. Yo, know, they'll engage youth in my den, 25 and 69%. Requirements teach a scouting skill or reinforce a scouting value, 24% and 72%. So they really did a great job on sending this back in. It was really based on the data, working with educators, and the feedback from us, the, the volunteers who work the scouting program. So it was not, and I'm still picking up myself on this one, it wasn't Mark McGrain, Council Commissioner, sitting up in Nashville, going, this is how I think we should do it. When's the last time you were involved in Cub Scouts? Oh, 30 years ago. How old are your kids? Oh, God, they're like 40, 50 now. They got kids of their own. Yeah. They, they were actually talking to the current leaders about how this works. And they, I think they've done a great job. So how long do you think it'll take to complete the adventure was one of these, just the feedback things in there. And look at a big chunk in the 30 to 60 minutes or 60 to 90, which of course meant more than one meeting, right? So again, most adventures were designed to be done in one or two meetings. So they reimagined the awards to adventures. So as we talked about, the awards had an attachment rate. They use all kinds of strange words up there. That meant people earned it <laughs> of 1.5, uh, of about 1.5. So it was an average between zero and 3% between you know, our, our NOVA, our summertime pack awards, uh, outdoor activity, conservation awards. So those are gone, but they're not eliminated. They got turned into the electives and they're, it appears that these electives are going to have uh, an achievement rate of 15 to 25%, you know, based on the surveys that went out, because obviously they don't know, nobody's done them, yet, except for some of the test groups that they, because they actually did test this in some councils as well. So all of those, they're not gone. They just got reimagined into adventures. So they're still there and they're just electives. So this has got to be one of my, my favorite ones when they brought this part up. This is the, the one picture. So have you guys seen these marketing pictures before, right? This is BSA national promotional material, which we absolutely lied to you on in our families. Ooh. We did. When we think Cub Scouts, right? There's biking. Is biking for every Cub Scout? No. no. When we think Cub Scouts and, and there's that picture of a fish and we have one on our own website, right? Can every Cub Scout go fishing for, there's, no. right, right. And, Pinewood Derby is awesome, right? It's it's like one of your fondest memories. I was a Cub Scout. I still have my Pinewood Derby cars. We did an adult fundraiser. My Pinewood Derby car raced. They do great, but you know. Um, we heard Kristen and Denny did great. 
I don't want to name any names, but Vaughn Neely's actually stopped at the uh, halfway down the track. Never even made it to the I mean, end. I don't want to name any names. <laughs> Sorry, Ron. <laughs> uh, so, but Pinewood Derby is a huge, memorable experience for Cub Scouts, right? Really? Ask any Cub Scout what's one of their... Stressful. Exactly. Yeah. How many people who were Cub Scout youth still have their Pinewood Derby cards of adults? That's a huge impact yeah. on our kids, right? Is this. And what do we do for it? Mm -hmm. Nothing. Maybe they get a, a participation award. Maybe they get first, second, third place. Like a little patch. Yeah, maybe they get something. Or maybe they don't. Depends on the path, right? Yeah. They can act, but it's such a huge impact and a chance to work with a parent or guardian or other kids on designing your car and creating a plan and building it. Now it's an achievement. That's awesome. You can actually earn that achievement by Pinewood Derby or Ringgutter Regatta. Mm -hmm. And we'll talk about that as we get closer to these things. Yeah, we need to know more about the Ringgutter. Oh, I'll be happy to tell you that. Mm -hmm. So, hey, look, I, I'm right there. So, remember when I said we don't, some of this stuff we just didn't do, mm -hmm. right? So that's what that chart is. Um, anything in the bold black is new. In the italics, as it was there, well, holy crap. Pine Ridge Derby and Rat Ring got a regatta. We didn't do for anybody. You know, it was an adventure. It was just that your pack did it. Fishing, well, we only did it for bears. Wait a minute. It's a great activity. Cycling. My kids had bicycles at way young ages. And yet in scouting, we only did it for one rank. Right? Swimming. Right, we put our kids in swim classes early on, but yet we didn't do anything for them here. Swimming has now become a full activity where they can earn things off about it. And again, areas that they did great with. So that is a complete list of all the electives. You'll see um, the way this is broken out is the, the top ones, which are in the lightest color, those are the ones that are current named ones now. So for example, in kindergarten, or yeah, in the uh, Lions, Build it up, knock it down. That's a current program that we have. It doesn't look the same, but it's a, it, the name's the same. Yeah. <laughs> we changed, everything got changed. The ones in the darker version I of the yellow. Those were the new. Would you yeah. let me finish? Oh, sorry. The ones in the darker yellow are the brand new that the title wasn't even there before. <laughs> and then the ones at the very bottom that are in the darkest or offset are the ones that are only run by council and district. So that's going to be your, like your your archery slingshot, right? How how you so it, it starts in yeah yep yeah, we will in lions we will have uh, archery and slingshot that they can earn achievements. Oh. Now again, those have to be council or district opportunities. Mm -hmm. Cannot be done by you, but a resident camp we offer these. Right. Yeah, so when our parents are coming to us and going, oh, a lot of these adventures look the same. Can we use the same book? From the past years and we have to go no you have to purchase a new one they're, they're going to get mad at us i'm just throwing so, that out there right no but i can help with that as well so you know what every unit has access to right. everybody what did i come up to train out scout book yeah. scout book lists all the requirements and every adventure in there and when they're in that den you can go in and the parent can go in and take a look and see this is what rank they are here's the things that they can work on and list all the requirements now, the books are awesome. You know, um, we've seen the new books that come in. Um, they are very, and we'll look at the books when it comes up here. They're very um, oriented towards the right age groups. Thin? No. Oh. No, because there's actually a lot of information in it. Yeah. Um, there's a fact, lot of information that don't come with a leader guide, though. That's special. Oh, but the leader stuff, wait till, wait till we get to the leader stuff. They did, they did a, a great revision on the leader stuff, and that's the activity he's talking about oh, nice. later on. So that, now you'll notice that, um, the Arrow of Light program, which is now separate, right? They're their own rank. You see how they're shorter? Mm -hmm. There's a reason. What's that? Is it because they cross over? We want them to cross over early now, right? Right now, we're looking at the March, April, May timeframes. This is designed for them to cross over in January, February. So that they can, that's why there's less. It's not intended for a scout to earn everything. There should always be choices. And, and do you get everything that you're going for? I mean, it's kind of funny because somebody, set up tonight before this meeting to be mayor badge sign up for summer camp which was me set this night i knew it was mayor badge camp. so just before this i'm out there setting all my kids in for mayor badge sign up not every kid got to every mayor badge mm -hmm. happens right you're not going to get everything it's not intended to get everything yeah. right there's always should be something to do and choices to make so also when you look at all the other ranks 
What does it say about the six and two? Does it say we get the six and two and we we're done? No, you've yeah. got a lot more options, yep. so you're not yeah. bored yeah. sitting through the rest of the year. Yep. Parents came back saying we want more variety and we want to do more electives. Yeah, a lot more of really cool electives. Yeah. Like I was going through, so my middle just crossed um, from AOL to Troop this year. So I was working with my AOLs that I've worked with since Tigers. And you can see like the gradual progression of like, we did all these electives and it was super fun. And then like, they just got smaller and smaller and smaller because like things got harder as they got older. Mm -hmm. And like the timing of all of the adventures that we had between Weeblo and AOL were really, really time consuming. Instead, of, they? Like, I know. instead of like, Oh, you've got one or two meetings. Here's four meetings to like take. And I'm like, why is this taking forever? Is it me or is it the adventure itself? And a lot of people are like, no, it's just the adventure itself. I'm like, awesome. Yeah. No, some of them were theirs. You know, they were, oh. they were rough. All right. Yeah, believe me. Um, so AOL is separate, right? So everything's grouped by color. Um, we'll talk about how the advancement looks and all that. But they even wrote the requirements different. So this is unabashedly promotion of Scouts BSA. This is really intended to start getting them ready. The requirements are written that way. They're written towards learning about Scouts. We all know your, your current group of Weeblo or our um, Tigers are organized by what? So are there required? Answer the question Sorry. before you ask yours. They're organized. What do you call a Tiger group? A den. Do you know what we call the AOL group? A patrol. Yep. They are now starting to learn this. We're actually introducing the concept of dinner again, back right around fair, and we'll see that. And then they're going to be electing patrol leaders. So we're starting to teach them and getting them ready to cross over into a scout BSA troop. So they are really separate. But six and two, still six required elective, or adventures with two electives. And I know we have some uh, scouts BSA leaders that registered. I don't know if they're there online. Scouts BSA leaders, be ready for your arrow of lights to be contacting you in September because they're going to need your help to earn about that. Yep. Nice. Um, so we look at some of these things. Now, the weird thing was, so you've worked with AOL already then, sounds like, right? So there was, um, in, do you have any um, working with a troop, like uh, basic scout rank? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So basic scout rank and AOL, I mean, like me, my kids who crossed over from getting, yeah, they didn't have to do anything during scout rank. It was pretty much show up to the meeting, you know, and show their scout rank. did it in two meetings, yeah. Exactly. Because everything we did in AOL to get their arrow lights crossed over was scout rank. What are they going to do? They're not going to learn anything or get to know with the other kids that joined the troop at the same time they did. So they're not all meshed up this time. They've actually, there are some that are going to be there, like choose the name of patrol, select the patrol leader, right? We do that in scout rank, but they're going to start learning the concept here, but they still got to repeat it there. Um, you know, demonstrate the scout BSA sign, salute, handshake. Some of these things are the same, right? But out of all the scout stuff, it is not going to be walking in and they might as well just hand you your patch for scout rank when you first walked in the door because that's what it was, right? So, and this was done in collaboration with the Cub Scout National Committee and the Scouts BSA National Committee and intentionally planned that it was not going to be a walk in the door and hand their scout patch. They wanted to make it a little bit of intro into Scouts BSA, but not so much that when they joined with the other kids who were coming in at the same time, that all of a sudden they're at a, an advantage from other kids joining at the same time. So uh, very uh, intentional. So the uniform. Again, we're going to go with the do your best team, right? We have our blue uniforms. Generally, we're used to right around that Weeblos AOL. You know, when they start outgrowing them, they go to their tans, right? So that's switching more towards the AOL period of when they're in their tans. Do not get me wrong. Nobody is saying that you have to wear tans when you're in AOL, right? They grow fast enough as it is. I want to get as much use. <laughs> I want to get much out of that clothing as I can. Um, so while... You know, the, the intended uniform is the tans for the AOL. It is perfectly appropriate for the blues. What they are changing, though, is um, where we had the AOL neck chief cap and all that stuff. They're not having it. You know, they're getting them set up for Scouts BSA. They are wearing a Scouts BSA uniform when they go into, when they're when they're ready to buy it. No, if a family wants to go out and buy it, great, knock themselves out. Okay. Nobody should be giving them a hard time because they're still in the blues. We want to get as much, much use out of these blues as we can. Mm -hmm. 
So they've also changed those books. They're going to be two separate books as opposed to that one Weeblos book now, right? There will be a Weeblos and Arrow of Light book, and they will have their own stuff in there. Now, the interesting thing with the Arrow of Light book is at the very, very end is the requirements for scout rank. You cannot do the scout rank requirements and be signed up because you're not a scout. But you get to see what they are, to practice on them, get ready for them. You just can't earn it because you are not a registered scout. So, and they're all written the same, right? The, the AOL, it has the writing that is very similar to a, a scout rank or the, the scout requirements for anything. And the way that they're writing all the, the know-hows and articles and things like that are in there. Um, and the idea is when they cross over, They've already got the materials for the first right. Time. They, have, they don't have, have that first immediately run out and buy a new book. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So the lion little rectangular patch is gone. It's being made part of the triangle or the diamond, and that's it. Um, this is an overview of what it's going to look like. And you know, it used to be everybody thought that there was a specific order that they had to be in. And if you missed a year. You just left this blank, you know, if you came in a year later, you just left this blank spot on there. So that's, that's not what's going on here is we have our, um, you know, it, the intent is the top is the first, second, third, fourth. Doesn't mean it's what they did, right? Because if they didn't come in until they were a tiger, well, then it's going to be tiger, wolf, bear. And you'll see that there's, right? Uh, oops, I go, go for it. So we have, which one's missing? Weeble. Because guess what the Weeble is? Oh. The oval patch. Right, because the oval patch is the, the design of the patch that we use for Scouts PSA. So we've all seen the Diamond Weeble or the Oval Weeble, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Diamond Weeble is gone. It's only going to be the Oval Weeble that's left. Okay. So... And we're going to go into detail on some of these the other, are so other cute. Are they adorable? They are. They're fun. They actually look like yeah, they want to. They do. And as a den leader who spent so much time at the end of meetings, especially when they were younger, mm -hmm. flipping into the book to find out which scout's book was le it was left behind, I love the fact that they put a spot for their name in the front. Yes. Oh, no, I was just like, who's missing a book? Because I'm not looking. I don't care. <laughs> yeah. So, um, all the handbooks have been redesigned. As you guys already noticed there, there's the spots with the names of it on there. Um, yeah, I'll talk a little bit that in a minute. The way that you're going to start going about for this is they're providing a lot of digital resources for you, right? And the way it's going to be going, and this will be an example we use near the end tonight, is that um, with the new Cub Scout books, when you go to a specific adventure, pick an adventure, right? There's a QR code. Yes. You'll be able to take a picture of the QR code. It will take you to the National Cub Scout Adventure site, which you'll be able to now today, but click, 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 I'll click. first. Right. You'll be able to click, 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 and go to the adventure. Or you hit the QR code, it goes there, and it will give you everything you need to do for that meeting. Yes. Right. And we're going to see that because they're going to show you some outlines here, but we're going to give you a chance to try one of them tonight if you choose to. If you don't, you don't. Uh, so this is great. It's all there with live and interactive videos for this, and it will start right at rank. So you again, you could be on this one for lion. Okay, there's the bobcat. There's the required. There's the elective. I can click on the one I want and just click, click, click till I get down to what I need. Wow. Okay. Now the leaders guides that'll be coming out, which as I understand it right now, are just going to be digital leader, leaders guides. Mm -hmm. um, they'll have all the QR codes. That's so. So you cool. won't need. You won't have to flip through the book to find the one for the scouts, but you could. The way they've looked at these things is when you look at one, a particular one, like this is fun on the run, has a snapshot of the adventure, safety moment, right? Because hopefully you're doing safety moments as part of your den meetings. Here are the requirements, and then it has cards of suggested activities. Again, they'll list anywhere from two to three activities. Does that mean it has to be that activity? Can you come up with one of your own? Yes, you can. As long as it accomplishes what the requirement is, right. right? They came up with some for people, but there are other people, you know, and I'm going to pick on Brad and myself. We've been doing Cub Scouting for a long time. I, I really don't need somebody to give me a game or an activity to help them learn that. I'm pretty sure I can come up with one or no one or have stuff at my house, but it's very convenient for somebody who doesn't. Yeah. 
And the way they built these things is they're very visual is, you know, there's a close up of, of the card, but the first spot is the location. Do you want an indoor, outdoor, or an activity you have to travel for? What's the energy level of your scouts, right? Uh, yeah, today. The energy level of the scouts are going to be doing in the activity. <laughs> right. As opposed oh, to oh, be bouncing off the walls. Like, no, 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 no. Um, what kind of supplies does this need? None, two, how many trips to Home Depot do I got to make? And then prep time. I can just grab and go, or eh, I might need to plan this one a week or two out before I actually do it. And you'll be able to look very quickly at each one of these and make your determination off of there. Or same thing, a parent that you've given this game to, this activity to, it's very quick for them to decide which one's going to work for them. And it gives you everything that you need. It will break out how to run the game. It'll break out safety moments or the activity. I mean, I'm saying games, but it could just be an activity as well. If there are, and they're really working on this stuff, but photos of it actually in different steps of the process and ultimately a video of it happen so that you'll be able to click the video, play it and watch it. Cause I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure we've all had that one description of where you're reading about how this game works and you fold this here, you do this here, then you put tab A in the slot B. Macarena. Yeah, right. And then you're going, is there a picture? I yeah. mean, I don't think Seriously. I get that. Is there a picture? <laughs> and they're going to be including all of that. The visual is one yep. of the best. Yep. And that's what those those other slides are, is the additional resources, is photos, multiple photos of the activity in progress, and at the end, and the video of it being done. I think it's cool because, like, the current den leader guides, they give you different, oh, for this den meeting or this den meeting, you can do this activity or this activity. But again, it doesn't make it easy for you to figure out what you need, where you're going to do it, how you're going to do it, when you're going to do it. Like it, that is so much more. Yeah, it's I agree. Nice. Simpler is not. Yeah, yeah. but it's no. That. That's actually the idea is to make it that. Remember, fun, easy, simple. That was the intent. The intent is just because you're the den leader, does that mean you have to do all these activities? No. no, you have the parents. We are not the babysitters of America, contrary to popular belief. Right. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Any questions so far? I'm. This is about halfway through this second night before he talks for a little bit. Questions so far? Anybody online with questions? Nobody shouted them out yet. That's a possibility. I'm not discounting. Okay, let's look at the required. All right, as we said, six required. So what this slide is showing is, it's kind of funny on the phrasing of it, but like the lion's honor. Was a required adventure right now. It says sunset adventure, which means they've killed it. It's done. June 1st, that name doesn't exist anymore. We look at fun on the run. It, this is where the misnomer is. They say no change. It's a required adventure, mm -hmm. but they did. Every adventure got changed. So you pull fun on the run in a current Lions book. It is not the same requirements as fun on the run for Lions in the June 1st book. So basically all the requirements are going to stay the same as last year? No. No? None of the requirements. Are. So they've added required it's adventures. The same but different. Yeah. They okay. require, they, they, they've they removed something like required. We just did they, fun on the run literally tonight with our cool. clients. The fun one. And um, something wrong. Yeah. So, so the lines next year will not be doing the same fun on the run. Okay. It will be different. So like the activities are different. Mm -hmm. But the requirement. No, the requirement. The name is the same. Yeah. It's the same and I mean. the theme of the activity is the same. The requirements the to complete it are different. Okay. Definitely. So, and that's all this. So I'm not spending a lot of time on this slide. That's all this is, is showing, right? Um, and they show it for Tiger where they sunsetted some, you know, brought new ones in. Right. It's just showing you that there's been a lot of work done here. It looks like it. Yeah. Because, yeah, I'm, we're on bears and... Yeah. Yeah. And you see, like, you know, Blue the Builder was required. Mm -hmm. That got turned into an elective. Oh, nice. Yep. That was so, a requirement. Yes. You know, Bear Claw, um, they added whittling stuff to there, but we'll get to that when we talk to those areas. Of course, they had all the fun stuff. Like, I just start getting the band. Well, <laughs> no, because it, it comes up again. Trust me. That's a fun one that keeps coming up. Okay. Uh, Weeblos and AOL. Um, so here's the changes that are there, right? Um, we'll see a screen on this later on when we get them. But right now, you have the Weeblos colors, right? That's what they wear. They wear the, the bar, says Weeblos. You have the, the three colors on there. 
the tassels. We call them Weevil's colors. We call them tassels. That's fine. <laughs> um, Our kids don't care. They just don't like this one. Right? And then you have the pins, right? So what they did is all of the Weevil's pins, the required, are diamond with a color icon in the center, right? You see that the fire, it, it actually looks like a fire, so to speak. Um, and that's staying like that. The elective for AOL, for Weeblos, I'm sorry, uh, right now for the electives, they're ovals. So that is going into a diamond. So it's going to stay the same diamond, but the difference is going to be is that on the required, it's the color. On the electives, it's all the same color. Arrow of Light is going to a diamond. So for those of you who are really old and been involved in scouting, the old Arrowhead um, patches that we used to sew on, uh, they're going with those. And again, it's going to have the same theory, theme. If it's required, the center is colored. And then on electives, it's the program color. Okay? So that's how you're going to differentiate. And they're changing the name from Weeblos across the colors. And it's going to say um, Adventures. Hey, wasn't it Adventures? I know I got a picture of it. I think it was adventures. I think that's cool for like your advancement chair when they're looking because I, I did advancement chair for years and then it was you're looking at these ovals and they're all the same. Yeah. And you know, oh I right? need this for my weed lows, but I also need this for my arrows, and my arrows sometimes look the same as the weed lows and it's good that they're like making them separate. Yeah. So there's the listing for the weed lows. Again, this is just required, not electives. And then this is all new, right? The arrow of light is all new because they didn't have this before. Okay, so again, this is just talking about the surveys and that there was a lot, a huge amount of responses on this one. I mean, it was one of the largest survey responses BSA has even seen, ever seen. You know, we were actually, it was nice. We, it, it's nice to say nobody at council, nobody at national listens to what we're saying. They did. And if you, you know, did, just out of curiosity, the, the people here in person, did any of you guys happen to get the survey? Were you around in Cub Scouting at the time? Brad? Yeah, I got it. And you guys did? Okay. Uh, a couple years ago. No. This has been in the works for a long time. <laughs> I was going to say, it, I did a survey a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, it was probably. not an, it was. That was probably it. Yeah, it was not an overnight thing. It, this was a lot of surveys that came back and forth. And the responses was better than anything scouting had ever seen before. Um, again, this is just more of the, the data on surveys. All right, Bobcat. So it's there. We're using it to develop the, the, the oath and law of scouting. Sign and salute is still part of it. Um, they're often part of the DEN meetings, right? It should be reinforced. Hopefully every DEN meeting starts off with your scout oath, scout law, hopefully a pledge. Um, requirements age appropriate, and it's easier to deliver because they earn it every year. You know, it's just the requirements change. So this is not all of them. It's just showing you a snapshot of what it looks like. So, for example, on the line, get to know the members of your den. Have your adult partner or den leader read the scout law to you. Demonstrate your understanding of being friendly. Share with your adult partner during a den meeting or at home a time when you have demonstrated the Cub Scout motto, do your best. At home with your parent or legal guardian, do the activities in the booklet, How to Protect Your Children from Child Abuse Parents Guide. I read you one. I'm not reading you two. I'll skip over to three. Uh, learn about the patrol method and discuss the benefits. Choose a patrol name and elect a patrol leader. Make a patrol flag that includes everyone's name. Recite the scout oath and law. With your parent, develop a code of conduct. Demonstrate the scout BSA sign, salute, handshake. With your patrol or your parent, um, visit a scout BSA troop. That's what Brad was saying earlier. This is going to be a requirement for all the troops coming up to be ready. This is one of the first things they're working on. That's the bobcat. Yep. At home with your parent or legal guardian, again, the how to protect yourself. And if anyone read the bear while we're in there, you saw that that was a midline between those two. And again, break in the other two ranks each time the parent becomes progressive. It's reinforcing and progressive. So it makes it easy to, if you need to combine a den for a little bit, you can do it and the kid's not left behind. And at the same time, there's always something new to learn and being reinforced on what they learned last year. So it'll keep going and they'll keep learning. And this, the Bobcat had a lot of good um, responses on it as far as the changes went. You know, one of the comments when I was a den leader for a mixed uh, line tiger den, that would have been helpful to have to give everyone access to earn the Bobcat. 
Simple, more streamlined. The fun games will engage the Lions. So our outdoor activities, uh, common act there's a lot of common activities. This one has the common activity of take a walk outside in the Cub Scout Six Essentials. We saw that. That was one of the very first things that we saw, saw come up there, right? Made it common theme, common activity, common lessons. And then they do have a little bit differences, right? At the uh, lion, it was domestic animals and wild animals. Same thing there for the tigers. It's a change of account. And then it was this because the book will have one circle and you start seeing them. Leave no trace principles for kids in action. Planning basics. First aid, leave no trace principles for kids. And then camp with your arrow of light den or with a scout's PSA troop. So progressive and growing. And just more promotional comments. Personal fitness. Um, again, has the common theme. Be active for 20 minutes or more. And it's at every rank, not certain ranks. Healthy eating, personal hygiene, proper rest and relaxation. So, you know, we're, we're teaching healthy habits and it's growing along through here. Uh, we started we're from food groups and hand washing for a first couple. Start moving up to brushing teeth, personal exercise. And this is my favorite part is being a health, health person or health officer for a lot of activities. The scouts starting at Bear need to understand their medical form. Starting at Bear, they need to, to understand what their medical form says, and that's important. Mm -hmm. I've been at a, a health officer at a lot of events, and I'm looking at a health form, and I'll say to a kid, it's like, okay, so you're allergic um, to uh, amoxicillin. Huh? They have no idea. They have no idea that they're allergic to this. They have no idea that they the medication they take is for this because the guy just hands it to them. So it's important that they understand what they're taking. Yeah. Now, does it mean they have to have it all memorized? Absolutely not. They are learning and growing with it, but it's usually important because, you know, I have older scouts that don't understand their medical yeah. forms. And that's scary not to understand your own health. Yeah. So now it's... Especially when you get in like a tight spot and you need to know, like, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. That's what it's like a perfect age for. Really start necessary to... and every... Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, did I sound bored with that? So sorry. <laughs> Drilled into my head forever. <laughs> I am so happy to hear that. Look, she's got them. <laughs> All right. Um, so just some more positive comments. So citizenship. Now, this is a neat one, and this is probably going to be one of the easiest ones for you to do. So the common activity is a service project. Service project. Every rank has some form of community service to do. What form of community service does every, hopefully, every unit in our council participate in? Have, exactly. Scouting for, you got to say it louder for the mic. Oh, scouting for food. Oh, right. sorry. Scouting for food. So really it is, right? It's already a pre-made event for you. A little bit of planning on your part, but for the most part, the, we take care of it as a council to put all the information out between the council and district. We give you all this. That counts. Now. When we look at that next spot where it talks about where things change a little bit, you'll see down when it gets down to AOL, planning a service project. Now, here's the thing. Planning and doing aren't the same thing. It's plan a service project and then do a service project does not have to be the same one that you plan. Right. Because why scouting for food's already there. So they could plan a park cleanup. Doesn't mean they have to do that. They're already doing scouting for food. This is to get them used to the idea of planning for an event, right. an activity. So believe me when I say they could plan one thing and do another, and they can here. Uh, but this is where they're starting to learn. Um, you got voting, that, uh, flag etiquette, uh, how their, their family practices is citizenship. So it's nice. Uh, so when we get into our personal safety across the board, so we're all aware of cyber chip is gone, right? Um, this is where they're reintroducing that concept, the protect yourself rules, along with the, the online protection stuff. So it's been put into every rank in here now, in some form or another, they have it in here. So even though we have CyberChip, which is gone, we all know that hopefully everybody watched the videos, even if they didn't work on the CyberChip award, they did the protect yourself videos, right? Now it's part of the FT requirements in here. And oh, but, oh, my favorite part, and every den leader's favorite part, designed to be done at home. <laughs> Hi. This is one of those that you definitely say to the parent, this is you, not me. You have to do this. And it's important that they should want to do that with their kids.
So on here, you'll see just some of the differences, you know, how do you access emergency services and being situationally aware, right? That's always important. I'm teaching my kids that all the time. Um, we moved to online safety and safety equipment and all the way down to starting to learn some basic first aid. So we also like have, like, I know we, next week we're having an EMT come in and teach the kids some stuff. Is that something like we could do mm -hmm. next year? Yeah. Yeah, there's basic, there's some basic first aid going in here. I mean, these are this is just high level overview of stuff. You know, you'll want to look at the requirements for each one to see where that stuff is in. But yeah, they have first aid in there. Yep. And that's going to be for all of them now. It move it slowly progresses each time. Yeah. Yep. That's cool. So family and reverence. So this is our duty to God, right? Scouting it. We don't tell you who you have to believe in. We just say you have to have a belief in a higher power, right? Uh, I don't know about you. This is one of the hardest things for me as a den leader. And in fact, in my den, every year, I always told all my families, this is you. You tell me when it's done because who am I to tell you about your faith? You know, and how you practice it and how you met those things. I didn't do it. I straight, they'll tell the scout executive. I straight, <laughs> I straight out told my parents that you guys tell me when it's done. That is exactly how this one is designed. This is designed. And it's, it's more... Um, other faith friendly or written, I guess, is, is a way to say that. Denominationally written, right. If you think about some of our past stuff, it was kind of more denominationally written, right? Yeah. Uh, in Bible. Well, like we used to tell our parents, we're like, I know this says duty to God, but like if you have other beliefs, please make it do your best and, you know, yeah. go with your beliefs because we also understand that, you know, not everybody is the same and, you know. Yeah. So the way this goes is if we look at in Lions Pride, so kindergarten, the Lions area, act of kindness. That's what they're learning about. We build on that skill set, then build on that skill set and add in Aesop's fable of the boy who cried wolf, common themes of different faiths, um, being relevant in your family daily life. What does that mean? Faith-based organization defining um, duty in your daily life. So this is all really with the family. Now, here's... One of the new things that I think is unique and awesome about this, if you're not aware, people online that with us in person, we have the different um, religious awards, right? Faith-based awards, there's a lot of them, right? Almost every every recognized religion out there has one. We don't run this program. It's run by an organization called Pray. We facilitate, and all of our scouts can work and earn on these things. If your scout earns that award for their faith, their grade, or however the faith is set up, they're automatically signed off on this. They don't have to do it because why? The what the requirements for the youth faith based awards are way more <laughs> than what we put on here. Now, here's the difference. You may have one religion. We'll pick on religion A that their youth award goes from first to fifth grade. That means when they've earned it, you're signing them off every year because they have it. You may have another youth organization that they do it first and second third and fourth, fifth and sixth. They'd have to earn each time to be signed off or they've got to do the requirements, okay? But that is awesome that if they go above and beyond and do that, because remember, for those who've been working in Cub Scouts for a little bit, it was one of the do A or B, and that was B. I, I don't know about you, I've never yeah. had any of my kids that earned that. <laughs> that one. Okay. That is the end of that first presentation part before we switch over and Brad gets to talk for a little bit. Before I switch those screens off, questions, comments, concerns on anything so far, and that includes from um, our virtual audience. And I see it looks like I got a blipper chat, so ask as I'm looking at this chat. I'm not turning my back to you, but I'm turning my back to you. Bye, sir. So with, at least with our pack, I don't know if other packs are like this, we have a bobcat ceremony at like, what do we do at November? I think is when we yeah, do ours. I think so. Um, so like all of our new scouts and our all of our new tigers, they would earn their bobcat. So now would that ceremony technically be gone? Or it does that now encompass the entire pack? Or <laughs> for, I need or for the scouts that earn it for the first time. Whatever because, you like, would like to do. The, the most beautiful thing they said in the training was, who cares? Seriously. Seriously. Who cares? If you <laughs> if you want to do it, if you want to not do it anymore, who cares? 
If you want to do it just for the scouts to earn Bobcat the first time, great. If you want to do it for the whole pack and make it a lot of fun that way, wonderful. Oh, no candles then. No. We're, we're not oh, almost. <laughs> I, this, this is very. Getting first grade I shouldn't, I shouldn't say it this way, but this is very un, un, unpassed scouting. But the answer is make it work for you. <laughs> Ultimately, as long as the kids are having fun, the parents are having I had fun. Had to go change the, the patch up on it. Well, well, I now think it's cool that like, the it. Lions can get it now too, because the oh. <laughs> previous I don't think the Lions were able to get it, were they? We went from this way to to diamonds. I thought it was bigger and above. I don't remember if Lions turned Bobcat or not. It's been a long time since mine was a lion. So, like my my arrow that just crossed, he started as a lion, and he didn't earn it as a lion. And I don't think any of our lions had ever earned it. They just started it. I mean, obviously, coming to meetings every week, the way that they were, they knew your pledge, your oath, your law, and all that stuff, and they were learning, which was great. Um, but they weren't able just to get it. Baseball, don't trip yourself. Okay, don't kill yourself. But they weren't they weren't able to do anything until they hit tiger. So at least once they hit tiger, they had those fundamentals down. But I think it's cool now that, like, the Lions have an opportunity to earn that because, you know, I mean, our Lion Den is, last year we had, like, eight. Mm -hmm. This year we have seven. Like, we have a lot of little tiny. Seven. We have two. Don't come to our pack. It's so loud. It's one of ours. We only have three. Um, <laughs> all right. So to answer one of the questions that, that showed up, um, the question was, yo, is there a Cubmaster specific for this? And we... We took some of this and broke it down short before. Um, unfortunately, we we're, we're just weren't able to record at that. Mm -hmm. uh, if anyone has questions directly, like as a cup master for implementation, you know, let me know, and we're happy to to talk to you directly about it. We're not going to have a a cup master specific version of this. Um, there will be online training that should be starting to show up um, near the end of this month, no later than June first, on when the position specific training has changed to incorporate this. Um, because again, as a role as a master is going to be providing support to your den leader. And with the availability of the tools that are going to be out there now, it's huge um, and a lot easier to help them out by pointing out to these online resources. And like I said, at the end, we're going to put up a link where you can try looking at a live, uh, a live version of one of the requirements and how this, the den cards work and all of that stuff. Okay. With that, uh, for those who missed my intro earlier, our next presenter, Brad Voda, who is our, our scout executive. Don't hold it against him. He's okay. Uh, <laughs> thanks, Mark. About elective. I know, right? Okay. Cubs got a lot of elective adventures. We already talked about this a little bit. Um, there are a lot more of them. Um, and really, we preserve some of the old names. Everything's been changed. Some of the old required elect uh, adventures have become elective adventures. Covered a lot of that. Um, so you're kind of seeing here the difference. Um, you know, for example, the new ones here, down here in the bold and the darker colors, these are all brand new electives. Um, and again, the feedback came back that parents really wanted to do more electives and wanted to see more variety. These electives. electives like are more funner because it's not like you have to do it. You can mm -hmm. choose to do what ones that suit you. Yep. So that's why. And again, there are some of these that are designed to be across the board. I think you'll, for those who are going to Cub Scout resident camp this summer, you're going to see a lot of the across the board electives available uh, during Cub Scout resident camp. Um, the one group we were allowed to give this information to um, and some of the requirements for uh, early was camp staff um, management so that they could get a preview and start planning the program around the new program for the summer. Thanks, and that's for Camp Gordon? Yep. These are already patches over there. Yeah, like, so how does that work? So, like, if they earn, like, certain things from June, can that carry on to the new? Yep, that goes June, June to June 1st oh. to May 31st. All of our camping stuff in, in the in the big picture. So, um, I'm so excited. Showing it's showing here some of the things that have been um, have been sunset. Uh, so for the awards, um, like the National Summertime Pack Award, uh, the World Conservation Award, 
These are now elected belt loops. They're not gone from the program, they're electives. Oh, and now showing lions and what some of the new ones are. Don't want to go through them all because we don't want to be here all night. Uh, but there are a lot of changes, a lot of new, a lot of sunset, um, and designed to give a more robust program. And let's see if we're going to get to the slide. Oh, Mark already talked about that. Uh, and the, the difference between now Weeblows and Arrow of Lights not having shared electives. Um, they will have uh, separate electives. So I'm going to say it's real. There's a reason, right? Sometimes people go, it's like, well, they already covered that slide. Because it's really important to know that that's true, right? So for one of these examples here, and, and you said you were working on Weeblows, right? I, I just finished off with my arrows. But, oh, did but, somebody say they were just going into, they were in Weeblows right now, going into AOL? My son's going to Weeblow. Okay, Go so let's be clear about it here, is you've got Weeblows right now, right, who have just started working, you know, they finished their Weeblow stuff on the required, they've done seven or eight electives, right? You know where I'm going with this? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Continue on, because I don't want to step on your presentation. You might as well finish off with that thoughts going, because we really, that keeps coming up as a question yeah. now. They are in seven or eight electives. Uh, so do they have all their electives for Arrow of Light? Yeah. No. Um, if those electives were available as electives for Arrow of Light, they're no longer, it, no, it doesn't count extra. They need to do the new electives for Arrow of Light. And, okay, maybe some of those electives We'll have the yeah, same name. I made my program anyways when I did We Blows to Arrow Light. I just assumed that like we had to do more. So we did more. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so you already got the concept, and, girl. You uh, and even if they earn the elective with the same name, it's going to be a different pin. Okay. And the requirements are I was going to say the different. requirements are going to be different. So, so they can't just like and uh, that is a good it, idea. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't it so does they if they earned it in fourth grade, it doesn't count. As yeah, because you want them to, and it's not going to show up that way in scout book. Like it'll yeah. show that they've earned whatever, but they earned it as a weed one. Yeah, it's not going to be signed off on the AOL part of it. You know, because like right now, they're the same. Right, you go in and take a look for weed blows and arrow of light. It will show you've done these parts of once you've mm -hmm. got your weed blow, you've done this much storage arrow of light. That's not going to be the case anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, and and as we look at uh, arrow of light both required and electives. They have gone to more of a Scouts BSA naming. You've got cutesy names for lions, tigers. They get a little less cutesy for bears, mm -hmm. even more less cutesy for weeblows. Arrow of light. They said, nah. <laughs> in, in, <laughs> sure in, now. in Scouts BSA, but when you earn the swimming <laughs> merit badge, you've earned swimming. In Arrow of light, when you've earned the swimming elective, it's called swimming. So it very much is moving towards um, moving towards more of that Scouts BSA style. And again, talked about earlier how we had all these things that we advertised or were part of the program, um, but we didn't deliver on at all age groups. You know, for example, I don't know how many, you know, I've been doing this a long time, I don't know how many flyers I have sent home or how many scout talks I have done where I've sold fishing as part of our program. Mm -hmm. But you could do it in one rank before. Now there is a fishing elective at every uh, rank level um, and it gets more and more uh, age appropriately complex as they get older. Um, but can you do say a pack activity where you have fishing and probably fairly easily meet all the requirements for all the scouts, because there's going to be commonalities in all of them. Uh, you know, for uh, a lion, it might just be catch a fish, or it might just be try to catch a fish, where an arrow of light's probably going to have to do a lot more. They're probably going to have to bait their own hook. They're going to have to catch a fish. I don't know quite yet, although with one of the the electives maybe, um, but they may have to clean a fish. Well, I eat it. Yep. Cook it. So, you know, prepare. Yeah. Yeah. One, one of the activities I heard, which was 
wooden heights for a younger kid, right? At some point, there's baby club, right? Yeah, but you know what? I, I think it was at the conference, actually, where someone was saying how they did that as a unit activity. Paper clip and gummy worms. They just bent out the paper clip and then had the kids work with gummy worms. Oh, I'm just sorry. That's kind of neat. I mean, I think I that's need more. No, that's yeah. a really cute idea, though. Right, yeah. and they're not going to stab themselves. <laughs> no, so far took. Well, right. now I'm thinking if we're going to Camp Gorton, like that's something now I want our kids to try to do in July in prep for. That's awesome. Yeah. You're absolutely right. We offer all kinds of fishing yes. camps here at Sunny Camp We've Gorton. Seen it. Right during the, the upcoming resident <laughs> Cub Resident Adventure Camp, that there are still <laughs> opening for. <laughs> Please visit me. Fishing.org. <laughs> 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 Wow. Oh, come on. You, you he plugged you that. I was going to say, can I get a discount? <laughs> later on. Thank you very much. <laughs> you can't let me pass that. Oh, that was awesome. I know. I'm like, I'm totally oh, taking oh, advantage oh, now yes. of all of that. So, she loved it. Wow. <laughs> what other kids in the pack? <laughs> Cycling adventures at all age levels. Pinewood Derby, Rain Gutter Regatta. Um, now, one of the things that as a council, we have uh, asked our districts to do uh, in the coming year is we've got different districts who do their district Pinewood Derby different ways. Uh, we've had some districts that you send your first uh, or your first and second place scout can participate in the district Pinewood. We've asked all of our district, districts to allow any scout who wants to race to race in the Pinewood. And the reason for that is we have some packs in the council that are smaller and may struggle to do a pine wood on their own. So that's a place where the council can step in and say, hey, you don't have the ability um, or enough scouts to make the Pinewood Derby a really robust program. Go to the district Pinewood Derby. It counts. Now, just to add credit to, and this is going to sound so shameless after that last one, um, this starting next year at uh, resident camp, or public bench camp, we're actually going to be offering the rain regatta regattas. Yeah. 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 So that and that only came about because of these changes, right? Because again, as Brad pointed out, you know, we're we're looking to change the way we run the district events. We offer strong suggestions to the districts because of this, but there are also only a handful of packs that ever do rain gutter regatta. So if a kid can't make it to if the unit can't do it, okay. If they can't make the district event, because let's face it, you know, the district event is that it's not like we're running a different one because the day was bad for them. So, but then again, if they go to Cover Venture Camp, they could also earn it by just doing that. By going, and I don't want to mean it by just doing that, by by doing a rain gutter regatta there, it's the same award one way or the other. But I think doing a rain rudder, rain you know, gutter regatta. You're just checking off our whole book at camp. Just saying. Not the whole book. No, 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 no. If you do it at camp, you can bring it back to you know your pack, pack yeah. yeah because our pack's never done that and i've always mentioned I it i'm like this would be super cool i see it all the time in other places why don't we do it and they're like well it's just historically we've never i don't care i want to do it yeah, yeah. And I I don't know, because we've always done it that way there's never a great answer there should always be a reason behind well, it. we ran out of time this year now that's, that's a legit answer happened. um now the other one and I'm, I'm so thrilled nobody here asked the question but it did come up in other groups is well what about the um the rockets Right, the, the space one, right, where you hook it up, you have a um, big string that runs down through your rent. Mm -hmm. it's, oh. it's not a BSA activity, that's why. You know, it, there weren't enough people that ever did it, so they took that one out. So mm -hmm. that's why it's only time with Derby and Rain Gutter got. So, and this is showing, or on this prior screen, it was showing a belt loop for that, but like this year they had the Derby. Pinewood, Pat. Pinewood patches that I did order off of the BSA. Those will, those will probably still be available. But should I have also have ordered a belt loop? Was there a belt loop? There wasn't loop a belt loop. Okay. No. That that is is When's this effective? The, June. 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 That's fine. I yep. just want to make sure that this wasn't one where it existed, but then it changed and I missed it somehow. Well, we always had kids that were, you know, they didn't earn first, second, or third place, or they didn't get a trophy. I know. They needed participation. That was the patch. I said, you ain't getting a anything else we gave all of ours like a ribbon that said you were here and now you get a belt loop too yeah now they'll have a the belt loop for working on putting in all that work on their cars yep. working with somebody on, on doing it i mean it's it's great it's it's a it's something for the work that they put okay, in we did what, participation so the swimming um the common activity for swimming across all ranks is to swim what? an option to earn this adventure is to take swim lessons or pass the BSA 
swimmer's test. I got another one that I get. <laughs> Camping, wait, wait, common activity. Just did you hear what he said about the request? What, what swimming was? There's Lesson. not one. There's not two. There's three ways to earn that every year. Mm -hmm. So, and that was another one of these huge factors that came across because there's a, there's only like what is it three, three three of the Avengers yeah. that have those options of do this, do this, or do this, mm -hmm. and you get to do it because again, basic underlining value. If they're taking a swim class, what are we going to teach them? If they can pass the BSA swimmer test. What are we going to teach them? You know, and let's face it, I'll answer the question for you right now. If the kid can't pass the BSA swimmer test, that really would be your best. I mean, well, if they didn't drown, I mean, yeah. Yeah. I, was say, I throw my kid in and say, <laughs> so, <laughs> maybe there are other, there's this or this or this. So yeah. to me, that's not one I would do a do your best on that you came up with a non swimmer. You know, there are, other, that, buddy. there are other ones yeah, on there, like swim yeah. classes or, you know, the uh, three or four strokes that they've got on. But okay. it's nice that they have the other options. Yeah, and yeah, that they break it up for, yeah. So camping, common activity, go on an overnight camp out, like Cub Scout Resident Camp. Um, for Arrow of Light, this is a required adventure. Conservation, champions of nature. Common Activity Conservation Project. Um, the World Conservation Award by the World Organization for the Scouting Movement has changed the award to Champions for Nature. So this was a change that the World Scouting Organization did years ago, yet our Boy Scouts of America organization uh, continued to use the old program. So um, the World Conservation Award that we used to offer, it's gone and it's not a belt loop. Uh, instead, it's the new Champions for Nature um, award that the rest of the scouting movement, world scouting movement, has used for years. Does anybody say it like less for camping? Uh, no, that was for uh, conservation. Oh, and not having read the descriptions of what the requirements or options are for that conservation, the like cleanup work that you can volunteer to do at Camp Gorton, is that something that would I haven't actually looked at them. I would be willing to bet that it probably does qualify in, in some way. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Summertime fun. The National Summertime Pack Ward, et cetera, um, was one that was the one Mark was talking about that it not only had to be an individual scout who did these things, but a, a percentage of the pack needed to all do it in order for any scout to get it. So now um, the, it's the Summer Time Fun Award is what has replaced it. Um, anytime May through August, participate in a total of three Cub Scout activities. Uh, earning this adventure is not dependent on others' participation. So Four months, three outdoor pack activities. It used to be three, didn't it? Did you want to go on August? Yep. And you had to do at least one each month and not okay. Yeah. So this gives you a little a little bit more, more time. Flexibility, to do it. yeah. Yep. Paddle sports. This was something that um that really was missing, has been missing in the Cub Scout program for a long time. Um, is is paddle sports, canoeing, kayaking. Uh, Etc. Uh, it you must a scout must complete the BSR swimmer test to begin the adventure requirements. Uh, for each rank, can be completed uh, with either a canoe, kayak, or stand up paddleboard. So an opportunity to get on the water and learn to maneuver a craft. But the other thing is there is do you know there's one from Cub Scouts that's missing? There's one missing. Well, I'm an old aquatics geek. No one else here is. Yeah, rowing. rowing. And rowing is a very, very difficult, challenging thing for even younger scouts to be able to do. As a former aquatics director at scout camps, um, I can tell you that was one of the more challenging merit badges for scouts to earn, just to learn the coordination required to row. Um, you would think canoeing would be harder, but actually I think that comes a little bit more intuitive than, than rowing. Knife safety. So. Before we had one knife safety, it was in uh, bears. Uh, now there are three different knife safeties, and they are focused on different kinds of knives. So 
whittling for third grade, chef's knife for fourth grade, for weeblows. So they're actually learning to use kitchen knives and how to properly use a knife to prepare food. Um, and then for fifth grade, knife safety in a, in a broader concept. To use it, a, a knife, a Cub Scout must complete the adventure for their rank, even if they completed the, a knife safety adventure previously. Uh, the adventure pocket card can be used as proof uh, of completing the adventure. So we used to have the Whitland chip, it's gone. Now, they're going to, each one of those three years, they're going to need to learn about knife safety again in order to be allowed to carry a knife. Mm -hmm. Which is not a so bad there's a, thing. There's a card that goes with that still, right? Yeah, it's, it's the said, card that comes corners? with the adventure. So yeah. it's the adventure card. Yeah, you know, kind of like card. when you, you earn your rank or your other things, you have the adventure yeah, well, card that goes with it. That's yep. what they're replacing it with. Yep. So our bears that just earned their wood on chip, they're going to get mad because they're going to have to do it again. Mm -hmm. After June 1st. Great. Yep. Yeah. And every oh, my, my son's going to be furious. Yeah, yeah me too. Yeah, but too bad. Listen, our bear dad is all girls. They're gonna be feisty. Listen, no one's better than my son because he earned that, and we still haven't got our popcorn prizes, and he chose the dice. Okay, yeah. it can't. So happen. that'll be June first every year that it resets. So that's when it is. So when it is, so as you're planning your den meetings, you might want to take that into account that if that tends to be one of your later den activities, you might want to move it up. <laughs> so they have a little bit like to time. June before camp. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Range and target sports again, getting um, you know, going through the process of starting to learn a little bit about it in kindergarten with slingshots and archery, and then moving up to archery BB slingshots. Why are uh, we five year old slingshots? Can I just ask that question? He can not really say that. That's why, because, you know, the important thing to do. Any, is it just me that thinks that, or is this like... No, I was kind of questioning that, too, going, hmm. I don't know. I, no. We're not giving them a BB gun, so I'm okay with it. <laughs> we're fine. Um, now, again, important thing about range and target supports. Uh, can only be earned at council or district events with qualified adult supervision. Only adults who are certified as range instructors may deliver these adventures. So again, restricted to council facilities, uh, district facilities. So like going to a winter or yep. one of those events. Yep. Correct. Or camp garden. Right. Yeah. Come back to camp, camp garden. Yep. Yep. <laughs> so STEM. A lot of feedback uh, early when this was announced was you're getting rid of STEM. Right. Well, in all reality, we've just increased STEMs considerably in scouting. We're not doing the Nova Award. We did a great job of focusing on the S in STEM but did very little for technology, engineering, or math. So now we have electives for all four in all age groups. Science, technology, engineering, and math. There is an elective adventure in all four of those areas for every age group. And I know that my son's den is going to be so excited to do the math elective. STEM. <laughs> and this is for what? Uh, this this is uh, science, technology, engineering, and math. There is an elective at each grade in each one of these categories. I think that's cool because like science, the Nova's math. A RPAC has never really had somebody that was trained for Nova, mm -hmm. nor could we reach out to figure out who yeah. we could ask for Nova. So like none of our scouts have ever gotten Nova. Um, so I think it's cool that or, yeah. So like I think it's cool that it's is, broken down like this now. Math? Engineering. Okay. Engineering. Fine, so I got some familiar old names like gizmos and gadgets. Um, then we've got some new things like designed by a tiger um, in the engineering area. Um, Era of the wolf is a, an older one. Baloo the builder. When you get to bears, um, I like for um, the arrow of lights. High tech camping, focusing on camping technology. Things have come a long way since I was camping as a scout. So we are hitting uh, STEM a lot harder, making it a lot more available in the program with the new program. Good. End of section? I'm on. Oh, yeah. You got to check. The, yeah, the next three are shorter sections. Okay, questions, comments, concerns, as I bring up the next one. And might be a chat on here. You guys are way too quiet right now. Oh, okay, just somebody saying the next night. 
What's that? I didn't. I think I did. Yeah, I'm gonna have to get his tell me how to do it so I can do it on my screen. Yeah, yeah, I was actually thinking about it. I did it. Yeah, you could just do the job for players. Oh, yeah, I did it there. I don't know if you can fix it. It's taking a minute. It's taking a minute. Yeah. I'm taking it out there. Because I used to add, I didn't want to add. I just Yeah, like, please help me. Like, I'm not. Okay. Barring our questions, let's look at Air of Light and Scouts to BSA transition in here. So as we said before, you know, Air of Light is is really being oriented towards the Scouts BSA program. Unabashedly, it's promoting Scouts and for them to cross over and, and go to the unit. Um they don't need current Cub Scouts, don't need to change your uniform. I think we've impressed upon that. But you know, there's a reason we keep saying this because somebody's gonna be out there saying. Nope, it's a tan uniform. I don't care. <laughs> I'm happy they're in one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you also see, you know, like we talked about these changes, the Weeblow's oval patch will be the only patch that's left. You know, there's not it's not gonna be part of the diamond. The arrow of light doesn't change, right? As they earn that. As we're familiar with with our um our Weeblow's colors or tassels, um, you can see at the very top it's changing over to adventures. Right, reflective what the whole thing is. And then as we talked about, and I think it's a little clear here on what I was showing before, but you know, if it's um Weeblos, it's in the diamond. If it's arrow of light, it's the arrowhead. Required adventures are colored on the inside and electives match the theme color. Now I don't think I've I've explained this as much, but if you notice with things talking about lions, tigers, wolves, bears, there was a color associated with each one of them. Like when we looked at the required adventures, when Brad was bringing up the electives, each one had its own color, right? And we looked at the whole thing. Yeah. That's the theme color for the program. And that's when we're saying like on these pins, that's the theme color. Mm -hmm. So again, it makes sense. AOL is the tanner brown because again, we moved into scouting. <laughs> um. Lose their funness. So there was our funness. It's an arrowhead. We give them something pointy. What do you want? Not at one point, we gave them three points. Maybe five. Yeah, five. Count the other two. Oh, Did I mention I'm a retired prison guard? Of course, I had to count. I had to use my fingers for it. All right. Um, so again, as we said, you know, the uniform for the Cub Scout themselves, the blue, they had the neckerchief, the hat, you know, all that stuff, that's not changing. That's they're still gonna have the stuff that's there in the AOL side when we go there, they're not. You're, you're not gonna get the, the neck cheats, the hats, things like that. Um, those are going out the window on that one. So basically whatever's left is what's left. So like we have our ranking up ceremony mm -hmm. Sunday. So with our we blows that are crossing to arrows, remove neckerchiefs, all that stuff. Do you have them already? What? You already have the neck sheets and stuff. They're, because they're for their moving up. For their moving up stuff, the weeblows that are moving on to arrows, they already they would be keeping the same. So for ours, they they kept the same. Yeah. So we oh, just don't saying, yeah. we're yeah, going to remove them now. It's, yeah, they wouldn't. But in the end, let me tell you something. Right, the kids are are used to it. Who is going to go around and give them crap about their uniform? The moms. <laughs> <laughs> right. It, they're. We don't have, and nobody should ever, ever be the uniform police. Oh, no. We have people who go through and will provide advice, suggestions, or answer the questions on it. At no point am I ever going to go and, and dress that. And th this was stuff that was big, like when, when Brad and I were kids in scouting, right? There would be people um, that would come through and do uniform inspections. We had the score sheets. Yep. And, you know, points based on how much of your uniform. And some of these people kind of got rude. If even your patch was was off by a little bit, that's not the intent. I'm happy they're in a uniform. If if the kid comes in and they're wearing the weeblos because last year's kids wore it, so they want to be the big kid too and keep wearing it, or in your patch tradition, right? Um, they said if you want to wear a neckerchief at AOL level, it should be a Scouts BSA neckerchief. So you could take those 
those weeblos who are going to become arrows, and where you would have just had them keep the same necker chip, you can get them Scouts BSA necker chips, whatever pretty color you want, and do do the necker chip change for them. Yeah. You know, if that's what your pack wanted to do. Um, again, it's one of those instances where at the conference they said, who cares? Make it fun. Are right. the kids having fun? Are the leaders having fun? Are the parents having fun? Great. Okay, um, and that's just talking again, just more about the transitioning and when it happens. But really, the big thing is don't go out and buy a uniform. Wait till they grow out of it. We have a uniform box that we're like, if you like, especially ours that have outgrown uniforms, and they are like, uh, does anybody need one? We're like, yeah, put it in this box. Mm -hmm. So we actually have one of those boxes, and it's super handy. And that's a great idea that we try to go right yeah. because these kids always grow out of the uniform. That's the one thing that's guaranteed in Cub Scout. Which is nice. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. But it's guaranteed that a Cub Scout is growing out of that uniform. And I'm here to tell you, I don't care what any parent thinks, they are never hanging out of that uniform to give the kid later on. They'll put patches onto a display case. I've only rarely, rarely, and maybe you've seen more, Brad, only rarely have seen where they've taken one of the shirts and made that the background, like folded it up or cut it so that it would be the background of the display case with the patches there. Nice. Do not see a lot of them, but I'm pretty sure with most Cub Scouts, that was one out of two or three uniforms. <laughs> well, and, and here's the thing I'd say, too. Um, we've talked a lot about, okay, they're in their blue uniform when they go into Arrow of Light. My son made it just barely through Barrier in his blue shirt. <laughs> I'm like, all right, he's going into Weeblos. I can buy a khaki that's going to last him at least three years. Do it. And always buy larger. Yep. Check again. And always buy larger. Yeah. Right? We know this with our Cub Scouts. Yeah. <laughs> buy big. Like, All right. Also so fast. We got somebody who's got new blue shirts. I'm like, you're swimming in that, but that's fine. You'll fit yep. into it in a year. Yeah, they grow right into them. Um, all right. So as we said before, Arrow of Light was designed in collaboration with the Scouts BSA Committee to get them ready for scouting. Um, if we look across, those are the required. It's the Bobcat. Then what's our character and leadership? Our outdoor adventure is the outdoors. Personal fitness is personal fitness. See, there's no, what's not the, there? The cute names, right? The uh, cutest images. They're they're getting older. They want to be treated more seriously. So the material has been, it's been done to reflect that. Citizenship is citizenship. First aid is safety. Duty to God is family and reverence. So at the Bobcat, we've covered these already. Those are the requirements in through there about the Arrow of Light Bobcat. So really starting to get into learning about scouting, um, building and solidifying the Scout Oath and Scout Law. Um, did we talk about the dinner, Jeff? No, we did not. You said the word once, and then you said you'd come back to it. Yeah, look, I'm trying to remember if it's inside this presentation. I can't remember. Well, let me cover it so I make sure I don't forget it. All right, so for those of us who've been in Cub Scouting a really long time or in scouting, there was a program called Denners. Think patrol leader for the den, one of the youth who is the leadership now, uh, or the leader. Now, at a troop, they elect a patrol, the youth elect a patrol leader. It's not usually the case in your den meeting. In your den meeting, what typically would happen is that the den leader would say, okay, this month it's this person, this month it's, this. you know, they'd line it up each month, each kid would be the denner and you would give the denner responsibilities like um you're the one who's leading the scout old scout law pledge or back in the day it was the cub scout stuff but and it wasn't even so much that they had to say it up there they would be the one who was running it they would call up or they would call on another scout to lead them in this this scout to lead them in this they would help you tell the kids to go and do this next activity right they they provided just a little bit of help and it gave them some experience as being a leader just a little bit. They didn't have to plan or do nothing. You would just say, okay, go ahead and tell them, let's take somebody to do the Pledge of Allegiance right now. And that would happen, right? It's like the line leader in school. Yeah, exactly. It's like <laughs> a line leader. leading them, but they think they're the... Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So this is a great program, and it was a great opportunity to start teaching a kid leadership skills. Mm -hmm. And then somewhere along the way, we, we got away from it. They're bringing it back. In Bear Ring, um, that will be in in Bobcat and Bear is it'll be, uh, I can't remember if it says a point or elected dinner. And you'll have that dinner from 
bear on and in AOL becomes control. So we're going to start introducing the leadership responsibilities there. So starting in June. Starting in June, your your bear den will, at some point, you're going to have a den, which is going to be one of those you. And the way you can do it is, and, and I'll tell you, I so it was, I'm not saying it was gone. It just wasn't promoted, right? Denner was still there. It You just didn't track it for anything. Um, like at Scoutbook, we could track leadership positions. Denner was in the leadership position. Um, but it's a great experience for the kids. So when I got up to, actually, I don't think I did it to Weeblos. In Weeblos, I start Weeblos in AOL in my dens. I made dens. And, but I laid out the schedule saying, okay, this month it's this person, and every month it was somebody. And it worked out great. And, you know, if somebody wasn't there, I just picked a kid to fill it. To fill it. So, okay, um, Arrow of Light. So, personal fitness, we're starting seeing these requirements get a little bit more scout oriented, right? So, plan a balanced meal that you would eat when camping, prepare that meal using the gear you would on a camp out. Now, again, it's reading what it says and not assuming what it says. You plan a meal that you would eat on a camp out, and then you then you make that. Do you have to do it on the camp out? No. No. Are they going to go on a camp out? We just did it with bears. Right. <laughs> but this is arrow light, right? There's camp out as a requirement for that. Right. We're going out. Do they have to do that meal on a camp out? No. No. They just have to. They can make it at home for the family. Right. Right. This is making sure we understand what the intent here is. Right. The intent is that they're learning about healthy eating and that they're learning how to prepare these meals. While it's a meal that you would do on a camp out, it doesn't have to be made on the camp out. Yep. And then track the number of times you are active for 30 minutes or longer over a 14 day period. And then it just kind of goes from there. So some of these things are just building on stuff that we've done already. Um, citizenship. Develop a plan to conduct the service. This yeah, like I said, I love this one. Pl develop a plan to conduct a service project, the uh blah 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 mm -hmm. blah blah. Yeah. Project project project. Project. Yeah. yeah. Develop a plan to conduct a service project safely. So come up with a plan, a project, plan it. Participate in a service project for a minimum of two hours. Did it say it had to be the same plan? Nope. No. And I've covered that. So they could plan on doing a cleanup at, say, where your unit meets, the charter station, nearby park, whatever floats their boat. But what could be their actual community service project? Scouting for food. Exactly. We've already got that planned. And do you spend at least two hours on scouting for food? Mm -hmm. I mean, you probably do it on even one of those days, much less we do two days, right? Yeah. Tags out, bags in. So we do two of those days. So I'm sure you did more than two hours right there. And yeah. that counts. And all the ranks, it builds, right? It goes from 30 minutes to an hour to two hours. And people are going, I know when we're looking at it, people are going, Two hours for these kids. Just for so, Arrow of Light, or does this apply to this applies to all? Arrow of Light is the only one that says plan a project. Oh, okay. okay. They, I think it's starting right around Bear mm -hmm. is do a project. Okay. Because I don't think the other ones had. Do you remember if the other ones had it? They, they have some sort of service hours. Yeah. Some sort of service hours in there, yeah. but they grow. So let's say it goes thirty minutes to an hour to two hours, right? So it's service project in there. Arrow of Light is the only one that starts learning on planning a project. Mm -hmm. We're starting to get them prepared for planning because who's supposed to be planning the campouts and the troop meetings and all that? It's supposed to be the youth leadership. This is starting to get them ready to do that. Yes. So first aid, this is where we start learning more about first aid and um, the more serious in injuries is what this is, not the, the quick band-aid stuff. Um, duty to God. Again, going on from there, but discuss with your parent or guardian what it means to you and how you do it in your daily life. But again, we're writing this stuff now towards an older age. Uh, these things that are highlighted, those are all the requirements of Scout Rec. The ones that are highlighted is what we're doing in far as between our adventures, between our required adventures. For those of you who've been with it, it was almost one or two white lines left. <laughs> so, so yeah, there's still going to be a lot for them to do in Scouts BSA when they join, when they cross over, right? And that way, again, this falls into that another another kid who joins the troop who didn't go through your den or through the pack, they're not going to feel left out because they missed all of this stuff. Well, they're all not having it. So they, they didn't get it. So there's still a lot to learn when they first come in. They're not going to get bored 
in the first few weeks or months. So right here, kind of an overview of um, Arrow of Light with the Scouts BSA, just where they're learning different things at. You know, the Scout of the Law motto slogan is Bobcat, 1ABC, but we just looked at this on the first screen, on that previous screen where I had this stuff highlighted. It's just telling you where it is. Uh, so the books we've talked about on there, that the um, two very separate books, and it's the next PowerPoint presentation, I think, is in our last one which will start getting into the books themselves. But um, as we said, it's written to a more higher degree. And at the very end, it's the requirements for Scouts BSA. So they have them as a reference, but they can't do it. Okay, that was our Scouts to, or our AOL to Scouts. Questions, comments, concerns? Good, I wasn't gonna answer them anywhere. <laughs> All right. You didn't check your chat, Ben. I'm checking the chat right now. I think you're a great teacher, and you have us all on the same page. So can we get the books and them? Um, <laughs> can we go to camp? <laughs> We're ready. Yeah. Sounds like it's going to be so oh, much fun. <laughs> I don't lose. I got plans for us to knock a bunch of stuff up. Yeah. I'm just excited because, like, this is our first year ever going. Going where? To camp. Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate that. I'll, I'll catch on the way out for the payment. Yeah. <laughs> so, high five. This is our first year, and like the kids are super excited. I think I'm more excited. Yeah, more excited. Think, yeah. Yeah, I'll be excited to put them to bed so that I can sit by the campfire. Yeah, and do marshmallows without them. <laughs> they smell that a mile. Away. I know they, they do. do. But the fresh air makes them tired. It's a nice thought. We're all back in camp, overheated and tired, wanting to just lay down. And they can't run a while. We're yelling at them to stop running behind the tents in the dark and go lay down. Because they're past the point. Yeah. So they're... Okay. Handbook, leader, and resources. All right. Existed leaders. Yeah, well, I actually have a bear leader book, um, <laughs> but it's like eight years old. But I hated our old den leader books because I would still have to, it's like, go to this page in the book, yeah. and then I'm like, oh, I can actually see what I'm supposed to it use is. because I can't use the den leader book. Uh huh. And anyway, it continues, sorry. All right. So, um, handbooks. The age is, uh, the grade is right on the front of the book. Eliminates a lot of confusion of parents um, and a convenient place to put their names. Um, and I believe this probably gets into more specifics. Yes. Um, so the Lion um, book, same dimensions as the current handbook. Um, increased page count from 24 to 64 pages. This has a lot of activities in it. Nice. Um, custom artwork. Um, by the artist who draws the Scout Life magazine cartoon strip, Blind Pride, contains age-appropriate activities that help introduce the topic of an adventure or help complete the requirements for an adventure. So a lot of what the Lions, and we'll see this with the Tigers as well, is in their now, handbook. Now, will their books be like our books now, or will no, it still like be these books? Book. Okay. So thicker? Yes. I'm assuming that's three times. times. So there is an example yeah. of my lion trail oh, that as they go through it and that's so cute. do their path. That's they can so keep track cute. of their project right in the book. Well, did you tell me who designed it? Who did the artwork? Yes. Right? So, I mean, right. you guys, do any of you guys get Scout, you know, Scout Life? The new one. Uh, you know. No. So I, I, I get cops to make sure I always get them just so I, I see what the kids are getting. And, staying up to date on it and the artwork's cool, right? Yeah. And it's great that they the same people who are doing the artwork in that created this artwork. It's a it's a continuity. Yeah. So here's an example of an activity. Let's camp. So in Let's Camp, we're going to be talking about appropriate attire for different weather types. Mm -hmm. Part of, of camping safety. So you've got your your lion and then you've got all these little outfits in their book that get cut out and then they can dress up Oh my doll god, that's awesome. Yep. Dress up their, their lion with the appropriate clothing for different weather as part of their activity. 
I so. would totally put a stir and like the cutest outfit on and it would not be what, what it needed to be. <laughs> All right. Funny thing, They're going for cute. That's a not appropriate. Is, when they designed the pages, they did leave the back page for it. Oh, right. Because how many times have you seen that where it's like, oh, cut out this, and then there was an activity. It's like, ah, yeah, yeah. yeah the, the old, the old Dun Leader books where you had something like that, you needed to photocopy it, or you were destroying yeah, the information on the other side. Or yeah, it's yeah. Like, back, like front to back, you can't cut. Front. So really, the the um, lion and tiger book have, to a great degree, become activity books that support the program that they're going to be. So doing. the tiger book is not. That size anymore? It's the size of the lion book. Is that what you're no, they're no, they're these ones. No, no, the no. Lion tiger book. That's what I mean. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, size. so the lion and the tiger book are both, both that size. This size. Oh, wow. right? um, bigger. Well, yeah, no, that's fine. But they're this size because it's easier for a kid to handle. Yeah. So and harder for the kid to lose. Harder for the kid yeah. to lose. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there's that too. So yeah, yeah. that's Those, nice. So um, th there's a place in the book to track for the. Kids track their like adventure, uh, check, uh, check them off. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. yeah but it, so what it means is, you know, what's not there anymore. Would we have for the pause? No. Would we have in this last line book stickers? Stickers. What did you lose all the time? Stickers. Stickers. What couldn't you order replacements of? Stickers. But did they fill the book up with the right. stickers they got fit? So it's like they're gone. gone. <laughs> yeah. Literally. Stickers so are gone. If you've been in Cub Scouting a while, you realize that the Cub Scout, the Lion Handbook came with a the Lion Den Leader Guide. That as soon as the parents got home who were not the Den Leader, they threw it away. Um, now, in my experience as a Lion Den Leader, I told all the parents to keep it. Because the idea was that as a Lion Den Leader and as a Tiger Den Leader, that you asked parents to take months. And they needed that guide to take to do their month of program. Work. Yes, it works really well if you do it that way. But so now instead of being called the den leader guide, it's the adult partner guide hmm. for the adult partner to have their companion piece, and for the den leader to be able to say, "Okay, who's taking which month?" Mm -hmm. That's um, a great idea. It also has uh, resources in it to help the pack onboard parents and adult partners. A little bit more information about Cub Scouting. So there's there's some of that in there and really is designed to be an introduction to the Cub Scout program. And resources on how to deliver the program at home or at a den. Tiger Handbook is now the same size as the Lion Handbook. Again, um, the custom art in it is uh, by the same artist as the cartoon strip Tiger Adventures in Scout Life. Uh, contains age-appropriate activities to help introduce the topic of an adventure or to help complete a required requirement for an adventure. So the Tiger book is a lot more is similar now to the Lion book. Again, their Tiger Trail. I really like those. That's cool. Um, you have to tell Bob, the Bobcat the games, the yep. Uh, games to help with the uh, the Bobcat, and again, it's an activity book to help them through with the program. Can we keep our lines and toys? <laughs> uh, and adventure tracking, outdoor code, leave no trace, principles for kids. So it really is, it, it is designed to be a companion piece that's age appropriate for kindergartners and first graders to be able to do the activities hands on in their book. Without the den leader needing to photocopy pages of the den leader yes. guide. And again, Tiger Adult Partner Guide. Get those those adult partners engaged. Uh, when I was Lion Den Leader, again, I had my all of the parents took them out. We separated it out. I did the first couple to give an example, show it wasn't scary, kind of show them how I was following the den leader guide. And that tradition continued into Tigers. Uh, and having just bumped into um, uh, one of the parents, fathers of um, of my son's den, uh, we were in Lyons in, in Wyoming, um, that that group of parents has continued through the pack and taken on more and more leadership roles because they got introduced to it right off the bat mm -hmm. as, hey, you're going to help me with this. Yeah. And they got them engaged in little ways. And so that is a very engaged group 
and they showed the way for the younger group. So that PACS adult leadership is huge because the mystery of doing it was taken away very early. Yeah. Um, and again, resources on how to deliver the program at home or at a den meeting. So, you know, someone's out for a week with strep. How, how as a parent can I do this at home? All right, Wolf, Fair and Weeblow handbooks. Same dimensions as current version, approximately the same page count uh, and spiral bound. Arrow of Light hand handbook. Same dimensions as a Wolf, Fair and Weeblow, approximately the same number of pages, spiral bound and contains the content for the Scout Badge of Rank. So this is designed to be a full year handbook to get that Scout through fifth grade with one handbook. So they cross over in January, February, they've got what they need in this book to work on the requirements for Scout rank once they cross over into a tree. Uh, the front of the handbooks includes a parent guide, how to get started, what is Cub Scouting. So introduction, introductory information for all parents if they joined in third grade a couple of years back our pack had a, we doubled the size of our third grade uh, den and split it in two um, with scouts who hadn't been scouts before. So it's important um, that this information be in the handbooks every year uh, for those new parents that may not have been in earlier. The parent guide highlights adventures and requirements that are done at home. So it's going to help them through the pieces that they're going to do specifically at home. Bobcat, here, a little bit of information. Uh, it's chapter led snapshot, uh, an overview of the adventure requirements, QR code that takes you to the leader research space, uh, leader resource page for the specific adventure. What I really like about this, and I'll use a personal example, um, I got COVID in January of our bear year. I was the bear den leader um, and ended up sick for a long time. And my assistant den leader picked up for me. Okay. But I had to take my den leader guide and I had to scan and send him copies of the adventures and things so that he could do that. Every parent can do that. Because if they have the handbook, and we're going to play with this in a little bit, they have the handbook, they have the QR code that walks them through planning the adventure. Mm. You Kids, kid doesn't make it like sick at home. Parent can scan the QR code in their handbook and complete the requirements. So beneficial. So here's some examples of uh, of the requirements. You know, again, the ability to sign off um, in in the book and and track that way. I don't know how many uh, packs do that. I mean, we been in our pack we've been pretty much only doing it in scout book because it's you know more convenient to do it that way the bet color will have colored tabs that help navigate to each adventure in the book oh. easy to navigate how do you get there which one are you looking for That's so nice so we talked a little bit about the leader resources um these will be available on scouting.org um, on June 1st. On June 1st. <laughs> um, they will be active. Um, and you pick the rank, and then you pick the adventure you want, and it takes it through. Or, like I said before, you scan the QR code in the handbook. It'll take you straight to that adventure. Um, scouting.org bag, badge of rank. Page. So this shows you the required adventures um, and the elected adventures that are available for that rank. The adventure page gives you a snapshot of the adventure, uh, some of the requirements that are the requirements that need to be completed, um, and activity cards for the requirements. So this is the online page that scanning that QR code or going through the website gonna take, is going to take you to. So again. Um, each activity that completes a requirement um, is coded so that you know what's going on. So um, you can do, it'll tell you if it's indoor, outdoor, if or if you need to travel, it's going to tell you 
the energy level of the scouts during that activity. It's going to tell you what sort of supplies you need to prepare from a one being none and a five being custom or uncommon. It may be something you need to build before the meeting. Um, and the prep time. So from no prep time needed to more than a week ahead of time. So each one of these uh, options for completing requirements uh, gives you a code on it. And the idea is you're going to have, for most things, you're going to have multiple options. Um, so it is December 15th. You're crazy busy. You don't have time. There's five requirements. You select the least prep time, easiest requirements to complete. It still completes the adventure. Mm -hmm. It's May. It's getting beautiful outside. Yeah. You're doing an adventure that you can do outside that maybe takes more prep time, a higher energy level. You're a little bit more relaxed. Things aren't crazy, so you have time to build a little bit more active and exciting a program. It really is designed to help meet what's going on in the dead leader's life at the time. Um, so here's here's a snapshot of the activity. It's too small for you to really read, but it's showing us that it's an indoor activity, low energy level. Um, what do we got? Five? I don't have my glasses. Oh, we got a three for uh, resources required and a four for prop time. Uh, and then some examples, um, video, photos uh, of of what the activity is. So now I think we're to the point. Yeah, I got to just get this up because you. Yeah. Okay. So just now we're going to have bushes. the point I've been looking forward to in this all night. And you don't have to stay for this, but <laughs> I was at our uh, scouting national annual meeting last week uh, in Orlando, and I went because. Several days at Seabase wasn't enough on this topic for me. I went to a session on this program, hoping there was new materials, and there were. So I'm going to share a secret that isn't out publicly yet, but they already have a lot of the adventures up if you scan the QR code. And one of the activities that was new that they did is they had us scan a QR code for an adventure and build that adventure plan live on our phones. So that's what we're about to do. Um, the adventure I selected was Pause on the Path. It's a wolf adventure. And Mark is pulling up the scanned copy of the page I did today out of the handbook. So get out your phones. Ladies and gentlemen. Now, this is the goal for these adventures, is that a, a den leader, a new parent, can plan their adventure in 10 minutes or less on their phones. Now, I will admit when we were doing this exercise, they gave us 10 minutes. We only got halfway through it because the group that I was with, we spent too much time reading all of them um, and getting excited about all of the options we had. So we only got about halfway through the planning before they cut us off. Okay, so for those of you that are online, before I bring this up with them, what we're going to end up doing because maybe you can, you're using a separate phone and you can, uh, you know, take a picture of it, um, of the QR code. Maybe you can't, but what I'm going to do is put the link directly in the chat room. So if you click on that link that just showed up in the chat room, that is going to be the exact same as if you took a picture of the QR code. I'm about to get displayed here. All right, so for you guys that are here, I told, is that, is there, is there? you need us to stand up and move. Only if you want to take a picture of that QR code. Or I can walk the computer around to you if that would make you happier. I'm here for you. I am a service-oriented person. <laughs> I can walk to you if you like. So that QR code, when you take a picture, that's just like the ones in the, in the books now. That will take you to the BSA site on this. Once my group here has had a chance to take a picture because I sent everybody else the link, what I'm going to do next is put up the PowerPoint that runs through the survey stuff and the marketing stuff that they came up with. So if anybody wants to watch, as far as we go, if anybody has questions, please put them in the chat room. If this recording worked out well, we'll get it posted and saved up. 
We greatly appreciate you being here tonight. If you have questions, please shout them out now while everyone's working or put them in the chat room and we'll be watching on that. But this does at the end. We really do hope that you've enjoyed the material. We're both very excited about this. He gets to have a little bit more fun being a Cub Master. Um, I'm done with my dead experience, but I was very excited about all this content and the changes that they made for it. I think this is going to be a much easier program for us to use. And I don't even mean easier as in watered down. I think it's going to be easier for us as leaders to put this on. And it's going to be easier for us as leaders to get our parents involved. Because now you'll see this is very simple to set up. Um, and there are more changes, more tools coming. So you've got um, the snapshot of the adventure up, talks a little bit what it's about. It gives you your safety moment. Um, the safety checklist talks a little bit about the guide to safe scouting, um, the age appropriate guidelines, and um, it gives you a weather related, since this is an outdoor activity, a weather related safety moment. Talks about the fact that you need the annual health and medical record for all the scouts and a link to it. <laughs> Um, this, and then it gives you what the requirements are. And somewhere in here also, it reminds you that since this is an outdoor activity, one of your leaders needs to, so one adult at the activity needs to have the hazardous weather training uh, and the ability to take that. So then we get down to requirement one. Choose one of the following, and you'll see you've got three options. And you can see the coding there as prep time and energy level and where it's done. 